Over the past two and a half years, I not only have scaled my own agencies to multiple six figures, 10, 20, and 50K months, I've also helped over 600 plus other agency owners start and scale their business from absolutely zero. Zero experience, zero case studies, zero dollars, zero testimonials. And today I wanna to share with you what I would do if I had to completely restart. Now this isn't gonna be some bullshit like, oh, I'll send Instagram messages and sign clients. And if you sign 10 clients for $1,000 a month, you'll be at 10K, like no. I'm not gonna give you some bullshit. I'm gonna give you some real insight onto what I would do if I was in your exact situation where I had zero everything. Okay, you're a complete beginner, you're a complete newbie. Now, granted, if you're not a complete newbie, this stuff will still apply. You'll just have to start a couple steps later. So, the first thing I'll do is analyze your situation. I would analyze your situation, and figure out what do I need, right? Can I can I afford rent? Can I afford food? Can I live? And if the answer is no to those questions, if the answer is I cannot take risk, if you do not have money saved up, if you cannot invest in yourself, if you cannot take risk, the first thing I would do is I would go and get a job. Because what a job will allow you to do is a job will allow you to do a couple things. A job will allow you to live, which is very important. So if you can't live, you can't start a business. A job will allow you to take more risks. And the more risks you can take, the more, the more successful you can be, right? The Mark Zuckerberg even said it. The biggest risk of all is taking no risk at all. And so when you have a job and you have money, you can take more risk and you can invest in yourself and you can become better, quicker, better, faster. And the third reason why getting a job is very crucial is you'll have a lot more motivation to work harder because you'll realize how much you hate it. That's the, that, is the, that is the first thing I'll do is if I don't have any money, if I have nothing, absolutely zero, is I would go get a job because guess what? You want money, right? So it doesn't matter if you get money from a client or from a job. Like, no, you just want money. So go get money. We can, we can figure out the passion and the fun stuff later. But in the beginning, it doesn't matter if you start a business or work a nine to five, no one has the fucking passion. You just have to make the money. Okay, that's what matters. So go get a job. Now, let's say you do have a job. Let's say you do have some money, et cetera. What would I do then? Well, instead of trying to work against human nature and trying to reinvent the wheel, what I would just do is I would simply look at myself and I would go, what skills do I have? Like, what do I already have that I'm good at? Or who do I already know that I could help? Or what am I already interested in? Because the last thing we wanna do is try and do something that is, that is completely new to us because you're just setting yourself back. We wanna play the hand we're dealt and use the advantages that we have. All of us have advantages, right? If you're completely new, that's an advantage. Because it means you can test more often. It means that you can sell your story more. It means that people buy into you. There's tons, of, there's tons of advantages to being a beginner and to being advanced, right? But you just gotta play the hand you're dealt. And so in the beginning, what I wanna do is I wanna figure out what predisposed things do I already have an inclination for that will help me succeed faster in business, right? For example, if you're really good at piano, instead of trying to go, okay, I'm really good at piano, let me start a software company for real estate agents, maybe do something with piano. Right? Maybe you help piano stores, maybe you help pianists, maybe you become a piano teacher, maybe you help piano teacher get more clients, whatever the case is, right? Maybe you just branch into the music space because here's the deal. You not only have experience, you also have conviction and you have beliefs and you have a lot of trust and authority because you already know that space, but you likely already have connections. And so the third thing that we're gonna di digress into is when you're starting out a business, the last thing you wanna do is sit there and not get any clients. Like you need to get clients as fast as possible. And so this means sometimes just turning to your network, right? Everyone you know at any given moment in time knows at least 100 other people. And so if you just ask enough people, you don't even have to ask them directly. You just say, hey, man, I'm doing this thing. You're the only one that would want this. And everyone knows somebody. Next thing you know, you got a couple clients. Because in the beginning, we just want to optimize for experience. There's nothing else that matters, right? I don't care what any of these gurus say, and we'll talk about niches, niches and offers in a second. I don't care what any guru says. In the beginning, we just have to optimize for experience. That's the only thing that matters. Right? Because like fundamentally nothing else matters. Like literally nothing else. Experience is what matters. Because experience is gonna give us conviction. Experience is gonna give us confidence. Experience is gonna give us results. Experience is gonna give us case studies and testimonials. And those are the things that build your business. Money doesn't build your business. Those things do. And so when you get more of those things, your marketing becomes better. When your marketing becomes better, your sales becomes better. When your sales become better, you close more clients. And when you close more clients, you get more case studies, referrals, etc. And that's how business grows. But you have to start with getting the experience because that's what we want to optimize for. Life and, 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 and or I should say business and video games are very much the same in the sense that we're always just trying to get more experience. Right? You're always trying to level up, level up, level up, level up, level up. And, you, and no matter what level you're at, you're fighting bosses. Right? No matter what level you're at, it's going to be difficult. Right? And as you level up more, the difficulty in the, of the bosses increase. But you become better because you gain more experience. And that's how it works in business. Okay? Now, let's dive into the offers and niches thing. Do I think you need a niche in the beginning? Absolutely fucking not. It's the biggest bullshit I've ever heard. I, I, like, granted, I'll admit, niches are phenomenal. 
And like later on, you should niche down because if you don't niche down, you can't prioritize your service. It's really hard to scale. There's so much complexity. Your margins are lower, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But once again, that's later. Right now, the point is we just need to get experience. We just need to get our hands dirty. We just need to figure out, we, we don't even know what we like or who we want to work with or, or what we're good at. And so we just want to get our hands dirty as much as possible. The same way if you're a young kid trying to learn what sport you like, you don't just see the first sport and go, I'm going to become a hockey pro. Like, no, you dabble your hand in every different sport and you start to realize you know, what sports you're, you're naturally drawn towards. And once you're like, oh, wow, I really like swimming a lot. And, you know, swimming and football, those are like my two kind of favorites. Then you start to do those a little bit more and then you put the other ones on the back burner. And then you find out, wow, I really like swimming the most. You do something even more, right? And it's the same with business and niches. Instead of trying to like pick a niche or you know, hone in right away, we just want to just get experience. Like, let's just get our hands dirty. Let's just work with anyone, right? A realtor wants us cool. Home improvement wants us cool. There's a landscaping job, cool. Like, whatever the case is, just get your hands dirty. Right? Just go get your hands dirty. And then you'll start to realize what you like, what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, what you're not good at. And once you do this, then you can start to niche down. And the thing is, then you're niching down with experience, and also with an idea of what you're getting yourself into. Now let's talk about offers. What offers should you run as, as a beginner, right? In the beginning, what offer do you want? Here's the answer, it doesn't matter. In the beginning, your offer doesn't matter. You know why? Because no matter what offer you put together, no one will believe it. In the sense that you could sit here and, and guarantee someone, I'm gonna make you a billion dollars, it's only gonna cost you $10,000 and just pay me it up front, I'll make you a billion dollars. That's a great offer, right? And let's say you do it with no effort on there and it's done for you and the time delay is 10 days. But people still won't buy, why? Because they don't believe. And that's why in the beginning your offer doesn't really matter because no matter what you say, people have very low belief. And so as a matter of fact, it's counterintuitive to make a good offer because people will be less likely to believe it. If you make a quote unquote a worse offer, but people believe it more, they'll be like, okay, maybe I'll give this a shot. Right? Imagine if you saw a lemonade stand and the girl selling the lemonade said, this is the best lemonade in the world and I guarantee you that if you buy this right now, it's going to solve all your problems and, and, it's, and it's the best and there's no one that's ever been better. Now, you may buy because you're interested, right? but that's only because the lemonade is like a dollar. But if this is in business, you'd be like, I don't really believe you. You're new. How, how could you be good? But if the girl said, hey, listen, this isn't the best lemonade. Okay, Some of the stuff is bought from the store, but we poured our heart into making sure we mixed it and blended it and put the ice in and made it taste as good as possible. And so, yeah, it's not the best, but we tried our best and we want to learn to become better. You would buy the lemonade. Why? Because you're bought into the story. Is the offer better? No, it's worse but you're bought into the story. It's the same in the beginning with entrepreneurship. Instead of trying to sell this product or this you know, idea, which is fine, more than anything, you wanna sell yourself and your ability to get the job done. Because in the beginning, you may not even know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, more often than not, your offer changes when you work with someone for the first time, which you're like, oh wow, I should probably do this and this and this and this and this. And you start to do a bunch of different things. And so that's why there's, there doesn't need to be a huge focus on you know, what is my actual offer gonna be? Because we'll figure that out later. You just need to sign clients. You just need to have an idea of what you're doing, but like, hey, and you need to sell them on the idea. And the thing is, if you can sell somebody on an idea, you can damn well sell people on a good offer later once you have results to show that. It's that simple. And so let's circle back because obviously I've scaled a few of my own agencies and helped lots of other, other people. And I think some of the biggest bottlenecks come down to confusion, like, like over, com over, over complicating things. Like people are just like confused and therefore they get an analysis paralysis because they feel like there's so much stuff to do that they end up doing nothing. And also uh, like a lack, of <clears throat> a lack of clarity in the sense that some people actually know what to do. They're like Stefan, I know what to do. Like I know I need to cold call the people. I know I need to do this. I know I need to do that, et cetera. And they actually understand how to run a business, right? But the problem is there's little, there's little things of doubt in their head. There's little seeds of doubt in their head that are constantly doubting. So like, I don't know, is this right? Is this wrong? Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Because they've never walked the path, path before. And if you've, never, if you've never walked the path before and you're walking the path and it's only fog and you can't see what's ahead of you, it's really hard to know if you're going the right way. <clears throat> and that's why... One of the best things you can do as a beginner is find somebody that's ahead of you that can just keep telling, not even guide you necessarily. That's fine. They can guide you, but just tell you you're doing the right thing. Like one of the, like the best money I ever spent was on a mentor who didn't actually tell me what to do, but who just said, yes, Stefan, you're doing the right thing. Because what that did for me is it gave me conviction. It gave me belief. Right? It, gave me, it gave me confidence in what I was doing to actually go all in. And what happens is when you go all in, you then get the results. Most people, they don't go all in. They go like, you know, most people go like 30% in, but let's say they go like 50 or 70% all in, right? You're still not going all in. What happens when you don't go all in? You don't give it your all. And when you don't give it your all, what happens when you don't get the results you're wishing for? And when you don't get the results you're wishing for, what happens when you start to doubt yourself? You're like, man, I don't know about this anymore. Right? You start to second guess, you're like, mm, 
So I don't know if this is right anymore. And then what happens, you start to, you know, even go less all in, you do less actions, less inputs. Next thing you know, you're giving up. And that's why in the beginning, one of the most important things is not even necessarily to have someone guide you. That's important. That's good, right? To, to help you avoid roadblocks. But more importantly, just to tell you, yes, you're doing the right thing, to give you that belief, give you that validation of your ideas, of the things you're doing, so you can go all in without second guessing yourself. Because doing entrepreneurship alone is so, so, so difficult because you second guess yourself so, so often that you're like, mm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. That was one of the biggest downfalls for me is I kept second guessing myself. So whether you find yourself a mentor or a group of guys, whatever the case is, you need to find somebody. Who, and this is like, the thing is, this isn't even just at the beginner stage. This is even at the advanced stages where what you want to do is making sure that you always know that you have complete and utter conviction in what you're doing. Right? So I see a lot of guys who've maybe made a couple thousand dollars, like some of the guys that you know are in my in my inner circle. They've made a couple thousand bucks, but they're just like, I don't, I, you know, like, I think I know what to do, but I have so many questions that are unanswered. I'm not sure if I should do this or this or this or this or this. And they're like, they kind of know what to do, but there's so much confusion because there's so many things and opportunities that could go down. They end up doing nothing, and that's why they can't scale. And that's one of the biggest things I do is like, hey man, yes, you're right. Just do this. Don't focus on that stuff. Screw what your mom says. Screw what your girlfriend says. Screw what your teacher says. This is like, screw what that guru says. You're doing the right thing. You just have to do it this way for this amount of time and you'll be good. They're like, oh, okay, cool. Next thing you know, they text me a week later to find a hit 10K. It's like awesome. Okay? So here's the thing is starting, like, starting an agency, starting a business is quite, it's simple, just not easy. It's simple because fundamentally it's like you just have to have an idea and then get people to say yes to your idea. It's just hard because how many people say no and how uncertain it will be when you get your results is what makes it so difficult. Now, if you want some more specific trainings on agency stuff, I have a lot of specific content on my channel. You can go to my channel and just search whatever you're looking for, whether it's offers, PIFs, objection handling, etc. And you can go watch the specific content. But I wanted to make this to give you a general overview of what I would do if I was starting out again. To give you an idea of what it looks like. And the reality, right? Not some bullshit like, oh yeah, pick a niche and then like, no. Like the reality of what it actually looks like. And then to give you a bit of a timeline, the second I have this idea and I'm going to go get clients, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go sign clients. I'm going to sign so many clients to the point where, I've, where I have so many clients that I'm sitting there like, what the fuck am I doing? Once I have that, I'm going to service all my clients the best I can while continuing to get new clients. And as I service my clients, I'm going to tweak my offer, tweak my offer, tweak my offer, tweak my offer to, to base it on the results I'm getting and what they need. And then as I grow, I'll then start to slowly hire out my team where need be. I'll productize my service to make sure I can replicate every single time. And then I'll scale from there on out. It's that simple. But don't focus on that stuff first. Just focus on getting your first initial few clients, getting that experience, right? getting that knowledge base, and then going from there. If you have any questions, you can join my free Discord and ask me so I can give you that mental clarity. I can give you that guidance that you need. And if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, uh, just DM me on the Discord. We can chat about it. We don't need to hop on a sales call. If you don't want to work with me, that's fine. Don't text me. If you do, then great. You can do that. Okay? Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day. I will chat with you later. Peace.